Hey, what's up everybody? It's Eric with FisherDrumming.com back with you on another lesson. In this one, we're talking about how we can clean up our halftime shuffle groove and make it sound better, okay? This is for people who already know how to play a halftime shuffle and they just need some tips and tricks to make it better and improve the groove. So the reason I wanna do this lesson is because the last lesson I uploaded was on three triplet fills that work well with halftime shuffles. And within the first day or two, there was already a few different people commenting down below that were saying, Hey man, those triplet fills are cool, but how about that groove? I really like that halftime shuffle. Can you break it down? Can you show us what you're playing there? So that's what I'm gonna show you in this lesson. So get ready, hold tight, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so trick number one, let's talk about our hands. Let's talk about how they're working together because this is so important to get the halftime shuffle to sound good. The reason is, is because we're playing a triplet pattern here. And instead of playing full triplets with our right hand, we're playing one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. It's not all one and a, two and a. So that and is not there. One and. That and is always gonna be ghost noted on the snare. So now we're displacing that note with our left hand. So that middle triplet is not being played with our right hand, it's being played with our left hand. So this is a synergistic movement happening here. Okay, we have two limbs that are playing a triplet pattern together. So we need to have that really good relationship and that really good timing between our hands. So the first thing you can do to start to make this halftime shuffle sound better is just focus on are your hands playing the triplet pattern as they should. So an easy mistake to make is we're flamming our notes on the backbeat on three. So when we're playing one and a two and a three, that note, that three, it's easy to flam that note and play the snare slightly sooner than our hi-hat or vice versa. So play that very slow and sometimes what you can do to test yourself is play that pattern on the same surface. Sometimes it's harder to tell if you're flamming these notes when you're playing it on two different voices. So instead, play that on your snare only or on a pad. Now that three and uh, that should sound like one unison note. It shouldn't sound like a flam. So that's one of the things you can do to start cleaning this up is make sure that you're not flaming your notes. And the other thing that also ties into this is making sure that your dynamics are gonna be played the right way. Because if you're chopping really heavy at your hi-hat, it's not gonna give this shuffle the right feel. I think this groove sounds better when you're playing a little bit lighter on your hi-hat, especially when you get into faster tempos. Remember, when you play fast, you, you wanna be light, okay? That's the way you're gonna be able to play it without it sounding rigid and too tight. Often when we, when we play faster, we tense up too, and our wrists are not moving as fluid anymore. It has this really rigid sound, and it's easier to get off the pulse. But when we're nice and loose, it's easier to play faster. So I would re recommend just repetitively practicing the movement of your hands in this shuffle. You can actually just take out even the backbeat on three and just be playing that triplet pattern. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. And the whole point of this is to make it sound like all the triplets are even, to focus on your dynamics. What you wanna do is when you're playing that, that and, that triplet note with your left hand, you want to keep the ghost notes nice and low. Now as we're playing our left hand here, we're going to be accenting on three and then a quick ghost on and after three. Three and, okay? And that snare on three, it sounds good to give that a rim shot. Now basically after you hit that rim shot, you're just going to let your stick do its natural rebound. But what you're going to do is you're going to catch it so that, and, and you're just going to let it drop one more note in the triplet grid right after. So it's going to be one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Control the rebound so that it does one more grace note after. Now that's one of those things that's just going to take a long time to get the feel right. Because it's not something you force. It's not a, that, that ghost note right after is not something that you're going to consciously hit hard. It's just something that's going to... You're going to have to control the rebound and feel that out. And that's going to take some time. And that's totally okay. Take your time with that. So a trick that we can do in our halftime shuffles that's really cool is add in some grace notes in the groove. Now, 
I would consider those different from ghost notes. The ghost notes have a note value. You know, we're doing a lot of ghost notes with our left hand in the triplet pattern here, but the grace notes are something that we can throw in there and not necessarily consider them so something that we need to count out, but it's more about a feel. And what I mean by that is on the normal and placement that we're playing our left hand ghost note, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. You know, a good place to start is on the and of four, so four and a, okay? You can do a quick little, just grace note. Just drop the stick, but this time, instead of just doing a single note, we're gonna force a little double in there, okay? We want it to have a little zzz, we want it to have a little zing. It's a quick little buzz in there, okay? So that would sound something like this. One and two and So all we're doing is just a quick diddle with the left hand, but consider it more of a grace note. You could put it wherever you want. Any of those ands, um, just have fun with it and practice. Now here's another cool tip. You can take that left hand diddle right there and you can move it up on your hi-hat. So you're playing one and two and three and four. And, and, and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. So practice putting that in there. It's a little extra sauce to the groove, adds a little texture and a little spice. So have fun with that one. So here's another tip and trick that you can start using in your halftime shuffle and it's about chirping the hi-hat, but maybe in a place that you're not used to doing it. It sounds very cool and it lets the groove breathe. We're often used to opening the hi-hat and giving it a little sizzle on the downbeats, you know, on the one, two, threes, or fours of the groove. Try this though, try opening the hi-hat on the uh. I would consider it in my mind like almost like an upstroke. We're starting it on the beat before, especially when we're playing this triplet pattern. We have one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Instead of going one and a, two, we're gonna go one and a, two. Now here's the key part. When you do this, you want to perfectly open when you're hitting your stick on the uh, and then closing it right on time with when you're hitting the downbeat. Just like that. So that's gonna take some practice to get nice and clean. So start it slow. So let's talk about the placement of the kick drum. This is just one variation of all the different ways we can place our kick drum in a halftime shuffle. Now, the last groove I was playing in the last lesson, I was playing it, the kick drum pattern uh, was basically a two measure phrase. So we have one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Okay, so that's the way I was playing my kick drum. Now. The key to make it sound clean is that double. Most likely it's gonna be easy for you to place those single kick drum notes. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. But it's that a one that you wanna get clean because that's syncing directly up with our hi-hat. A one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. You just want those notes to be played exactly at the same time. And one way you can easily work on that, on getting that kick drum clean, is just by looping that double kick, just looping one and two and three and four and You can 
just work on that, okay? Over and over and over until it becomes like second nature and you're not thinking about it and you're just feeling it. So that's the best way to practice these things. Loop it, do it repetitively, hundreds of times, till it just feels natural. Take your drumsticks with you. When you're driving in your car on your steering wheel, no, just kidding, don't do that, but you know what I mean. Make time to practice these little things and it makes a whole much of a difference in your drumming. So guys, I hope these tips and tricks were beneficial for you and that you put them into practice because I know they will make a difference, especially if you're new to the halftime shuffle and you need to clean it up, all right? Now, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the lesson. Make sure you hit subscribe, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, share the videos, anything you can do to keep supporting the channel, I really appreciate it. Also, if you wanna become a member at fishdrumming.com, you get access to all the different courses available. And guys, just keep in mind, these grooves are so important. I'm gonna be coming out on a grooves course that goes through the main grooves that we all need to know, as well as a bunch of loops that you can practice along with. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys on the next lesson. Take care and have fun as always.